the mechanical brake designs the mechanical brakes design is classified into two category one is called as radial brakes and other is called as axial brakes the radial brakes are again classified as a show brake and band brake the show brake arrangement is we have having a drum here this one is a brake shoe and over here there is a friction material when we apply the force to this side this friction will come in contact and the friction force is developed in this direction if f is the applied force then the friction force developed is equals to mu times f and because of friction the braking action is done on the drum this type of uh, brakes are called as show type radial brakes these are externally applied similarly we can have the internally applied brakes also in the band brakes uh, we have a drum here on which we want to do the braking action we have a lever here this is a fix at this point and it can be uh, rotated about this point then on this side we have one rope which is wounded over the drum and this is connected to this side when the force is applied on this side the braking action is done and it develops a tension because of this we have a friction takes place over this surface and that is why we have a braking action on the drum consider here the second type of brake is called as axial brakes and we have here one disc rotating at a speed equals to n about the axis and this is a friction liner we have a friction surface here this is a friction surface when we apply the force to this there will be contact here on this surface and it will develop a braking torque now this time the force is applied axially that is why it is called as the axial brakes here the force is applied radially that is why it is called as radial brakes now consider here a drum this one is radius of the drum equals to r this is a brake shoe and we have a friction lining here if we apply the force if we apply the force here equals to f the friction will occur over this surface and suppose the drum is rotating in a clockwise direction then the friction force will act in opposite direction and the value of this friction force is mu into f where mu is the coefficient of friction of this material now this force is uh, this force is at distance equals to r from the center c whereas this force will directly pass through c so no moment is caused by this force because it is directly passing through c whereas this force about this one will try to rotate the drum in the anti clockwise direction and the drum is initially moving in a clockwise direction so there is a braking action and this will develop a braking torque so this braking torque t is the product of this force that is a friction force mu multiplied by f at a distance equals to r and the how much power is lost in braking that is called as braking law braking power or power lost in braking so you can calculate that value using a equation 2 pi nt by 60 now because of this braking loss there is a temperature is generated the heat is generated here and because of that there is a failure of this material so we have to use the proper selection of the braking material suppose this is the case of a drum and this drum is of a vehicle is mounted on vehicle the let's say m is the mass of the vehicle and v1 is the initial speed and v2 is the final speed so loss in kinetic energy is equals to half into mv square uh, mv v2 square minus v1 square this is naturally negative quantity because initial speed is high as compared to second and this braking is applied in time t so that much is the energy lost 
per unit second and this must be equals to your braking power so we can calculate braking power using this equation then we can equate this from here we can calculate torque once we know the torque we can calculate the applied force f we know if we know the drum radius and the friction material mu so this is how the friction force f can be designed now consider the second situation in this one we have a drum and this drum is able to move about this fixed center c and over this we have a rope and to this we have a weight equals to w and if this we want to uh, maintain the speed of this uh, weight downward direction and suppose this changes the position from h and after certain time it will come to the distance this so in this case your objective is to change the this uh, change in potential energy so delta potential energy is given by mgh or is simply given by w into h and if this change is observed in time t so we can calculate again the braking power and once we know the braking power you can calculate the torque required and once we know the torque we can calculate the braking uh, the fo external force applied for the braking consider here a drum and we have a brake shoe here and we have a friction lining if we join these two ends it will make an angle equal to 2 theta where 2 theta is called as contact angle now if we apply the force to this if we apply the force to this this force is divided into equal number of this force is divided into equally here on this side but the distribution of this force may not be equal or it is a non uniform rather it is more concentrated near this area and is less over this side and therefore we have to modify the value of mu because mu is not going to be constant as the distribution of force is not constant over this section so if i show you this portion here that is a part of show and if we apply the force here what is observed here is that the force is very large on the center and this is a very large force but as you go on here the force is go on decreasing like this so very small force is applied on the external side this is called as the non uniform distribution so we have maximum distribution at the center that is near this portion and we have less force distribution on the other side because of this uh, if we have a mu is the coefficient of friction this coefficient of friction is to be modified for this frictional force so effective frictional force is divided by f is equals to certain value certain coefficient equals to mu dash and this value of mu dash is given in terms of this mu and is multiplied by 4 times sin theta divided by 2 times theta plus sin 2 theta when you calculate this sin theta and 2 theta it must be in degrees and when you calculate this theta it must be in radian so in actual practice the coefficient of friction is not given by mu times uh, f but rather it is modified as mu dash times f and this mu dash is equals to mu into 4 sin theta upon 2 theta plus sin of 2 theta so in handbooks we have variation of this data now suppose we plot a graph of mu dash by mu which is equals to 4 sin theta upon 2 theta plus sin of 2 theta versus theta you will get a graph like this so if you put on uh, put the value of theta the graph will go like this and it is observed here that this ratio is equals to 1 here and up to this value this range is 1.05 and the corresponding value of theta 
is equals to 30 degree. So if we take theta equals to 30 or 2 theta equals to 60, then we, we get a variation of 5% in the calculation of mu dash over mu and that can be neglected. So if your angle is less than uh, 60 degree that is contact angle or theta equal to 30 so mu dash is same as mu and for other values you have to use this modified equation so we briefly divided the given uh, angle theta in two cases if the contact angle 2 theta is less than 60 then you have to take the same value of mu dash is equals to mu so there is no change in calculation but if the contact angle is greater than 2 theta is greater than 60 then you have to always take mu dash use this value for calculation and is given as mu times 4 sin theta upon 2 theta plus sin of 2 theta and be careful about the radians and degrees. Now consider here a drum and this one is lever and lever is hinged at this point A and this one is center C, this is the same point B here that is this is B point let's say this distance equals to distance A and let's say this distance equals to the distance L and we are applying the force in this side let us assume that the drum is rotating in a clockwise direction so we are getting a contact at this point at this contact and the fulcrum distance let's say this distance equals to E distance if the drum is rotating in this direction then the friction is developed here so friction is going to develop in the opposite direction as far as drum is there the friction will act in the opposite direction like this one and for the lever the friction force will act in this direction but suppose the drum is acting in the opposite direction suppose drum is act rotating in the anticlockwise direction then the to stop the drum the friction is going to act in this direction whereas this contact member will experience a friction force in the rightward direction so let us consider here the rotation of the drum in anticlockwise direction and this friction force is in the rightward direction that is equals to mu times f and this friction force this one is p and this one will going to act in the opposite direction so this is the mbd of the lever and since this is a hinge we have two reaction here let's say this reaction is ax let's say this reaction is ay and the this will going to exert a reaction on this one that is a normal reaction so drum will also give the equal and opposite reaction on it this is the drum surface since the drum is rotating in anticlockwise direction the friction force acting this is normal reaction n this is the external force p applied since the drum is rotating in anticlockwise direction it will experience a friction force mu times n and the friction force here at a distance is mu times n so here this follows the newton's third law action and reactions are equal and from this point A, this distance is equals to distance E. So it will develop anticlockwise moment. This will develop clockwise moment, and the normal will also do the anticlockwise moment. So if we take the moment balance about A, so if we take the moment balance about point A, so that equals to zero. So this value multiplied by this value that is the total length is L so P multiplied by L is the clockwise moment so positive value this N multiplied by this distance equals to A is anticlockwise moment so this is A multiplied by N and this mu into N is having a perpendicular distance equals to E will make anticlockwise so this is minus mu times N multiplied by E is equals to 0. So from this we can calculate the value of P is equals to this uh, the whole term will come to the right side is A times N plus mu times N multiplied by E and divided by L or we can write this external force P is equals to 
n can be taken common so it is a plus uh, e and whole thing is divided by l so since a and e are positive so p is also positive uh, this one is actually mu times e not exactly e so this is mu times e so we have external force equals to n times a plus mu multiplied by e divided by l where l is the length of lever a is the distance of the center from the hinge and e is the eccentricity between the point of application and the hinge and n is the normal reaction now consider this situation so what is the difference between this situation and this situation here the point of contact of here and the hinge is here so hinge is below the point of contact and in mind this figure this is a point of contact and this one is hinge so this time hinge is above the point of contact and let's say now this distance equals to e distance this is same as our distance equals to a and this is same as our distance equals to l at the end of this we apply the force p let assume that almost everything is same so we have a normal reaction acting on this one same normal reaction will act on the drum also drum is rotating in a anti clockwise direction so drum is rotating in a anti clockwise direction so friction force will act in this direction and the friction force here will going to act in this direction so the difference is that this friction force or this friction force here is making anti clockwise moment whereas this friction force about this point is making a clockwise moment so that is already making certain breaking irrespective of the value of p and if we take the moment about a now the moment of this value of p about a is clockwise so it is again p multiplied by l moment of n about this one is anti clockwise so this is minus n times a and the friction force about point a is making anti clockwise moment uh, sorry it making a clockwise moment so this is positive mu into f multiplied by e is equal to 0 so if we solve this we'll get pl is equals to mu into f into e but this is negative value and this is positive value and if i rearrange this term i will get p is equals to here is a correction this uh, friction force is equals to mu n so this is mu n so this should not be equals to mu f this should not be equals to mu f this should be mu into n this should be mu into n so what we get is p n is common multiplied by a minus mu times n and the whole thing is divided by l now here the value of p will be positive or negative depending upon value of a minus mu n so if a minus mu n is less than 0 